I can see them. Show me your hands. This is the pace. Show me your hands. Right now! Show me your hands! Right now! Scavenged, battery-powered police lights protrude from her back. The flickering light show reveals a gun in her shaking hand. Her hand is trembling from some sort of neurodegenerative disease. Madame, please drop the firearm immediately. You shouldn't be here. Something's very wrong with her. She's completely out of control. Failure to comply. Suspect is displaying aggression. Officer, under duress! Officer, under duress! I am the police. Don't move! Don't move! Hands on your head. Suspect is armed and dangerous. Lateral vascular neck restraint. Carotid sleeper. Carotid sleeper. Critically reducing blood from passing through the neck of the suspect. Be careful, detective. Don't do anything that might set her off. The situation looks bad. Calm yourself. Steady your breathing. It's a goddamn place, shitbag! On the pavement, you're under arrest! As she waves her hands, you notice familiar looking ampoules and packets sticking out of the mountain of police gear on her back. Medicine? Or drugs? She thinks she's a police officer. Try treating her like a police officer. A lower ranking police officer. What? Sir? In this moment of hesitation, she almost doesn't seem disturbed, but like someone suddenly waking from a deep sleep. With a swift, poorly coordinated move, the woman slams the megaphone against her lips and teeth. A trickle of blood runs down her chin. She doesn't notice it. Officer Compromise, unlawful impersonation. Pigs on route. Engage your will. Okay. She's actually more agitated now. My bad. Confiscated contraband. Restricted access. Two kilos missing. Our witness report compromised. I don't think she's on drugs. Being off drugs might actually be the problem here. Ma'am, please. We want to help you, but you need to lower that weapon. Disturbance reported. Authorized deadly force. Sector, take the shot! Big Red Key! Big Red Key! Big Red Key? That's code for the battering ram. Cop talk. You know this. Now? It's not the time. Resisting arrest! Confined quarters! Drop your head! Come in, dispatch! Come in, fuck! Civilian engagement! She's losing it. One twitch and there will be blood. She's frantic, confused. Teetering under all that gear. There's an opening if you just move fast enough. If not, the lieutenant's got her in his sights. Host almighty, don't count on that. You saw the Bino Cloud can't shoot for shit. Sure, you're you, but how do we end this? She's not just gonna let you leave.
What to do with her now? Nobody's ever around. Nobody ever comes to visit me. Her scratched skin is warm to the touch, but the person inside doesn't even know you're there. She's in a stupor. I've seen this before. God knows for how long. Could be days when they get like this. Honestly, I don't know. Dementia, probably. Dementia and Channel 8, and loneliness. Could be. Her hands were trembling, and she did seem uncoordinated. But what are we going to do with her? I don't think there's any need for that. In her current state, and without the gun, she isn't really a threat to anyone. We could let Titus know. This is a perfect problem for the local peacekeepers to handle. They might even know her family. Okay, that settles it. I'll contact my station after we wrap it up for the day. They can contact the sanitarium and handle the logistics. But I think we're done here for now. Let's head out. This is done. Please, leave the radio on. Reflex to what? Being left alone? She stands motionless. Just a heap of clothes and flashes now. Maybe if you search her once more? The woman stands slumped. She looks catatonic under her mountain of RCM paraphernalia. Is one of those things a police cap? There were narcotics in there too. You're thinking of taking them. Do. The old woman doesn't react to your touch. She doesn't even flinch as you reach out and disentangle the familiar looking lieutenant's cap from her mountain of RCM paraphernalia. Oh, is that yours? It's hard to say. It's been so long since you wore yours. It's your hat. You take the file of Porolidon and the bottle of speed as evidence, obviously. She didn't consume them. She didn't look high. She confiscated them, a little like you are doing now. <clears throat> You're taking those, are you? Listen to him, for once. Thank you. I'm doing this to help you. We need to focus on the case. He's grateful you did this. Grandson, he used to visit me a 
is a lad. Fine, young man. But who are you, then? The salesman of some sort? Modern goods are rubbish, and I can't afford them anyhow. It's a shame what you did to our country. To hell with the police. To hell with you. Her voice is drowned in white noise. Sounds like waves washing a beach, growing in volume until the call suddenly disconnects. You get a sinking feeling. It makes you look if Lieutenant Kitsuragi overheard you. To your relief, he did not. Calling. Still calling. Again? Seriously? Someone with a masculine voice picks up. Hello, Gerard speaking. Hello, Gerard. Technically speaking, your electricity. No, what you are is a surprise. Get his wife on the phone. No, but I got a feeling Al Kick Your Ass is gonna make an appearance if you ever call this number again. Have a good one, asshole. Phone hanging up. Disconnect. Calling. 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 Still calling. Still calling. Stop calling me, man. I'll get you your money, alright? I just need to tonight. Let me work. My debt? I don't fucking owe you. It's... Who is... Ah, never mind. I don't have time for this. He does not seem to be overly thankful of your kindness as he hangs up. Disconnect tone. <clears throat> It's getting late, and it's raining. Time to call it a day. Good night, officer. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. A brisk coastal wind still howls against the window of the shack. Occasionally, the waves crawl in under the foundation, producing a low hum. The room feels muffled, like you pulled your hat over your ears. Outside, it is cold and windy, but you're inside, and it feels safe and warm. What is this place to you? Westward, across the canal, towers the whirling in rags. Door number one on the second floor is locked. Behind it lies a trashed room. One floor below, behind the counter, stands an irritable man. In a small shack in the fishing village, a baroque heater hums quietly, emanating a sense of comforting warmth. A wash basin lies on the table the water inside reflecting the somber face of the world. Far away, on the corner of Perdition and Main, a nondescript building, obscured in a haze. It's vacant and lost, just like its tenant. Outside, the howl of the wind has picked up. The waves crash against the stilts again. It's as if you think the thought but in someone else's voice. Revachol forever.
The waves are beginning to die down. Look at those little bastards. Simmer down. Simmer down, bastards. Alcohol, man. That's exactly what she needs. Now make her see that. Alcohol? Connect? I'm not sure I'm following you. <laughs> That's a good impression. You really cracked me up, officer. Now, how can I help you? She doesn't even understand you asked her out. Perhaps you're too sober to pull it off right now. Try again later. The waves are beginning to die down. Look at those little... Alcohol, man. That's exactly what she needs. Now make her see that. She doesn't even understand... The waves are beginning to die down. You think she really needs more of that after a man died at sea? What if I told you it is actually possible to go on a date sober? Before recorded history, men and women were able to do simple, very primitive things together sober. Acknowledge the situation and keep it basic. I have, and I don't really. Just a walk? I don't know, officer. I would not have taken you for an innocent perambulator. Where would this walk take us, officer? All right, I will walk with you. But you need to understand that nothing is going to happen. We're just walking. Yes, someone could get pushed in the water. Maybe even get laughed at. But I'm sure that's not going to happen. All right, I'll go put the kids to bed and we'll meet at Land's End in 15 minutes. She doesn't wait for an answer. You better get ready. steadily at the waves. A sudden gust picks up her dark hair and lets it fall again, tussled, wild. She brushes a few stray locks from her eyes and only then spots you approaching. Aye, so here you are. It's late and it's raining. Water is cold, ice cold. Know that you're not the first guy to bring a girl to Land's End. This is what the locals call a, a make-out spot. <laughs> that is not going to happen here today. I just want to make that clear, Dimples. Across the rusty water, that's La Delta, the financial district. In the mist-covered distance, towers rise as a rebuke to the poverty of this coast. <laughs> Drinking men aren't known for keeping their appointments. The world. <laughs> Those big words men like to throw around as though they had weight. Let's just admire this piece of the world we happen to have in front of us, eh? Here it comes. So fast as to make it seem like the weather turns 
at her command. Me? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Just grew up on the sea. Know which way the wind's blowing and all. Knew the weather would clear up once we got here. Otherwise, it would have been a less pleasant stroll, May. You should say something. Anything. Maybe the tequila sunset thing. It's a common Revisholian expression. Means drinking yourself to death. Oh, indeed. And what about you? Keeping the name? Well then, Detective Costo. <laughs> the remains of the dying sun are reflected in the waves and the skyscrapers rising across the bay. Your mind clears for a moment as your senses take it all in. Not just the glass skyscrapers, fragile looking in the shimmering air. River Esperance flowing into the bay. Isn't it strange for this all-powerful thing, the sun, to be so generous towards us. You know, the best time to go out fishing is usually towards sunset, when the water is warmer. The sun also falls on the capeside tenements and war-torn ruins. An old sea fortress juts out, seemingly impervious to the sheen cast over everything else, shaking you out of your reverie. The sun does little for the dead, and those hopelessly lost in their own minds or people living in desert climates with sparse vegetation and little drinking water. Oh, that was a bit of pride and a bit of superstition. And a bit of conceptual unity too, it being yellow and all. Now you're just nitpicking. But I, I concede, maybe desert people sometimes disagree. The salt in the air, and the cries of the gulls and the skewers. Grit of the sand and the green glint of broken bottles. But still your gaze always returns to the dazzling streaks of light, wherever they may be reflected, their fading opulence. It's bringing us spring, summer. It's entirely on our side, no matter what we do or who we are, for absolutely no reason. Sunlight, no other powerful being, certainly no powerful organization or government. How can that be? I guess we wouldn't really be here if that thing wasn't on our team. You would be incinerated, or worse. Maybe some general remarks before you say something big. Work your way up to the cool. These? These aren't real fish hooks, silly. They're earrings shaped to look like fish hooks. A drunk called Rosemary brought them to me. I kept them. She's right. They're made mostly of plastic. A cheap novelty gift you can buy from a flower shop or a kiosk. The wind ruffles her hair as she looks at the setting sun. Thank you. I'm half Ubi. My mother was from Ubi Sunt. Not a lot of sun there, I hear. Though I've never been. The wind ruffles her hair as she looks at the setting sun. <laughs> it's enough that my fish goes there. Fifty real apiece they ask for spring cod. Good one. Um, I'm gonna go with the rope. She thinks it was a riddle. She must not even know of that business. Better that way. Here we go. Two different approaches to cap this off with style. Hi. And a benevolent one. When did you last have one of those on your side? Well, maybe it's that god that makes all those atoms burn up there in that big thing. You know, the wind's going to pick up soon, and I have to go, 
but... Have this. The sun's good, but it doesn't stick things. I've no use for it anymore. No. The men around here are too drunk to pose a threat to me. Doubt it. But thank you for the company. This is as far as it goes with her. You'd need to put a year between you and your last drink for anything more. Farewell. As she walks off, the wind picks up, and the light from the sun seems to fade. The crumbling silhouette of failed electrical R&D towers in the distance, beckoning. I'll just keep the Cordelechi in the channel, if that's okay. It's too shallow near the pier. Hi, ma'am. And it's a jetty, by the way. Of course. Jetty. I prefer a good jetty to a pier any day. Jet, jet, jetty. Something about the way she says it makes you want to sing. Oh, jetty, oh, jetty. It's good to see you here, detective. I only just arrived myself. Of course. How fortuitous that I'm so close at hand. What do you need? I love you did. Fast, observantly, like an electronic printer. Pleased to meet you, Lieutenant W. Freighter Dubois. I am glad to see a man of high qualification. The situation is precarious. What can I help you with, Lieutenant Y. Freighter? You have. And how did you like Mr. Clare? Finally. Time to choose sides. Of course, detective. Excuse me for implying otherwise. I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a corrupt verm myself. However, if you felt like passing some information... How could I stop you? 
Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be gossiping. Intellectually speaking, it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things. Tell her she'll like you for it. Yes, your disgusting necktie agrees completely. Let's gossip. Weird. Oh no. One of the positive things to come from the revolution is the unhindered exchange of information, you see. Even when it comes to trade secrets. Which isn't to suggest our talks constitute corporate espionage. Even if they did, it would be fine. But they don't, since you logged the money as a donation, and this is clearly just gossip between friends. The lieutenant might have, but I don't remember you logging anything as anything, Harry. A takeover? If they're taking it... Green livery, changing into red, blocked by blot. Like a cancer of the blood, metastasizing. Then we're talking about a war. Everard needs to let me into the harbor at once. We need to talk about this. They most certainly are not. Cronell has a thousand men on their payroll. The next batch will be a platoon of 20 men and a gunship. They have the support of Revachol West. They have the position. This will be a prolonged and bloody conflict. The only question is how long and how bloody. What do you suggest I do? Everything affects the decision-making process, detective. I'm afraid we won't disco our way out of this one. They will last as long as the drug trade in Jamrock provides them with support. With all due respect, that'll be a long and bloody time. What will I do? Her arms fall to her sides. Her spine relaxes. Did I ever tell you how they discovered this Isola? During our reality lowdown? It may be the only break we've ever caught as a species. The last one for 400 years. The nations who colonized this Isola called theirs Muindi, the world. It was all they knew, all they thought would be. That there would be something more was a gamble, akin to another world, or life after death. The Pale was thought to be impregnable, perpetual. Irene la Navigateur, the Queen of Siren, sent eight expeditions, one after the other, into the mass at the edge of the world. Five of the crews did not return. Two did, but had lost their minds. It was anything but normal. There was no precedent. People thought she was punishing the admirals, or had gone mad, or both. Until after years of trial and error, and the development of a strict psychological regime imitating the creation process of poetry. Call Volta Doma, or return from the sea. 
The eighth expedition returned sane and intact. They told of a new continent of matter. They told the Queen and her counselor, Dolores Day, that the pale had begun to condense, day after day, hour after hour, minute after minute. Slowly raining down until it formed a vast ocean. The air is cold and scented with petrichor. There are rain circles on water all around. Humidity crawls up your back like a piano trill. The droplets feel warm, like spring rain. The phenomenon has never again been encountered. For a time, the crew thought they were experiencing a hallucination. The mass hand proclaimed, Lancelinde, Lancelinde, the signal to wake up. But they could not. They were sane and conscious, as islands began to appear on the horizon. There are 78,000 uninhabited islands in the Insulindian archipelago, officer. The freckled face of God. You've thought it a million times. A total shift in human comprehension of reality. On the second day, a great skewer was shot down above the flagship Lizargic. The bird was preserved and brought back, along with pollen. Four years later, the Queen's counselor was proclaimed her innocence, Dolores Day, the elected world spirit. The age of humanism, internationalism, and parliamentary rule followed. We were high. On Caillou, the pebble, the largest of the fertile, uninhabited islands of the northeast Insulindian archipelago. Four centuries and two revolutions later. The first living autonomous organism. Proof of reality. It's the symbol of Insulinde, detective. The coat of arms of the suzerain and the wings on the crest of the commune. In your defense, it is a nasty creature who plucks food from the throats of lesser birds. Yet much like Revachol, it is also magnificent and rare. Imagine the suzerain of seagulls. The nations of Mundi proceeded to discover five more Isolae, or they discovered us all in the rush of the great inter reconnection. But these others weren't uninhabited. We had to kill people there. Wipe out indigenous populations, gunboat economies, or they came to do the same for us, or had done to each other. But here, there was no one but the skewer the Liliat Sea, and the Blood Beach, and the River Esperance. It was the new, new world. The Mondials used it to amass the greatest concentration of wealth mankind has ever seen. Revachol, the suzerain. Revolution, poverty, and the mercurial rise of capitalism. It is. Soon it will be spring and everything will blossom. I will surrender Terminal B to the Union. She puts her hand in the rain. She's silent for a second. We will see. It is. It is well within her authority. It's been clear for some time that this woman is more than she lets on. And what about the next time? What happens will happen. The age of capital has only begun. 
I will talk to my employers in person. We will amputate and cauterize Martinez. If you handle the situation on the ground. Yes, Mr. Clare has a two-month head start. I can't let it grow any bigger. And I've exhausted all my options from here. There are no employers. She's a member of the board. Probably a partner. You are the citizen's militia. There are no superiors. That's right. We're all answerable to someone. I have not deceived you. I told you exactly who I was. Rejoice Layton. Keep the peace, and I will keep my end of the bargain. A confrontation is imminent. They have followed in your footsteps. As your investigation reaches a climax, so does theirs. They are your shadow. Arm yourselves. Armor yourselves. Protect their targets. Violence may be unavoidable, but we can limit the casualties. Soon. I do not know precisely. They have cut off all communication, you see. They know I've been feeding you information. One last thing, Lieutenant Dubois. I've given the matter much thought and come to this conclusion. You're not an amnesiac. You're insane. I know, because I too am insane. I just hide my illness better. And I'm rich. No, detective. No one's as insane as you. I'm overexposed, baby. My travels take me through the pale dozens of times a year. I've got the longing, and I've got it bad. She would die to return to it. The pale, the past, anything one can return to. The same strict psychological regimen the Eighth Admiral developed when he crossed the pale and discovered this Isola. The Volta do Mar. It's used by inter travelers and other troubled souls, even to this day. You could use a little of it yourself. Watch out for yourself. They will strike soon. Slowly, the sails turn grey-blue as more oxygen gets between you. Wow. So someone's been a little boring. Yes, my standard liege. Someone's seen all sorts of wild ideas pop off and thought, I'll take the boring one. The regular, please. The brown. No need to be defensive. The regularity, the brownness, the cut and dry have their appeal. A very standard appeal. Of course you do. Let's get right to it. My Lord's copo type is regular cop. I'll let everyone know. I'll send out a telefax. Yes, the type of cop you are, sire. Think of it as a caste, a class even, a nation of regular law officials that you belong to. It comes, of course, with the usual benefits. Done and done. No actual communiques will be sent, of course. That would be too dramatic.
It's getting late and it's raining. Time to call it a day. The bed is comforting, if a bit run down. Still, you've earned a rest. The bed underneath you is soft, if lumpy. Waves wash the sand underneath the hut, then grow distant to your ear. In the quiet hum of the organic heater, you fall asleep. Like a deftly cast fishing net. Sleep pulls you out of the world and into its dark shore. The rough mesh chafes. Tightening around you, it digs into your brain. How have things been going for you out there? Helped anyone lately? Saved anyone lately? Murdered anyone lately? Because you know, you are a murderer. A disco music listening psycho killer who offs poor people. And then forgets about it. Hear that? Iceman wants to sleep. He doesn't care about killing people. That's nothing to him. Black water. Under the bridge. The thing he is really scared of is much, much worse than that. We're trying to help you. All these processes, these tortures, voices and tremors are all just distractions, flares and countermeasures to keep you from the last dream. The worst of them all. The last dream will be total annihilation. Cinders peeling off the fuselage. We won't be there to help you anymore, Harry. We will be dormant. You will be naked and alone. Of hell. An ancient sadness, brother. Ten thousand years later, in front of the video rental, there is a warm breath on your face again. Everything is okay again. Everything is so okay. Your eyelids flutter open for a moment. When you close them again, you sense the light of the room around you. You're back. In two seconds, the alarm will ring. The last thought in your head before waking is, you need to go to the church.